Ladies and gentlemen, it is now my pleasure to introduce the best of the best, best in show. Show. Who, Welcome he, to Best in Show Radio. Oh, Can that's better. Sorry, Keith. I thought you would start talking over the intro, considering we're doing the show the old and uh, live style way. So. I did. Didn't you hear me? Oh, no. That was post the music. I thought you were going to start talking over the music. No, you, you didn't get the text. He's getting his degree in ventriloquism. <laughs> oh, I forgot about that. Ah. I forgot about and that. I did a very good job, I believe. You did a great one. Keith, I'm sorry. No, 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 no. Please, please, please. After you. It's the Keith Show, starring Keith. Good evening, everybody, or good morning, or good afternoon, and welcome to Best in Show Radio on the Heroes Talk Radio Network. It is live. The thing you do with your ears and the place to be. It is live, that is true, but we are we are worldwide. We are worldwide right now. Intergalactic. We're don't, inter limit, don't limit yourself. We are. It's, uh, uh, I happen to know right now that it's 8.03 here. It's probably like 8.07 somewhere. There's lots of different times going on. I don't think it works that way. It does. You never heard of the four-minute rule? I don't think that, that it incrementally uh, time zones change. I don't think like... No, not get... incrementally, really. <laughs> right. But I don't. I think like once you get past a certain line, it jumps an hour. And then you go another line, it jumps another hour. Maybe a half hour someplace in there, maybe two hours someplace in there. I don't think you ever get to the No, there's no that... half hours or two hours. I think someplace there is because I, I don't think there are time zones over the oceans where there's no... Uh... Why'd you get so angry? Well, they are. By the way, this is an audio medium, so don't just shake your face at me angrily. Tell me, I'm James, and I'm on this show, and I'm angry. At least well, say, girl. No, I just Hi, want James. to disagree with you without necessarily stepping on you. So no. I, I was disagreeing with you and not actually sharing that, giving you the chance via audio to make amends for your mistakes. I believe that there may be a time zone that goes by a half no, hour. No, there is not. Because when we did uh, our New Year's show, if you recall, Keith. Uh, New we, Zealand. Uh, there's something all the way on oh, the Oh, when we kept announcing the Happy New Year to the different uh, Time places. zones, correct. There's something way out in the east. By the way, this side of the table for me, not going to work, and I'll explain why in a minute. Um, that it wasn't good uh, it wasn't good. There was some place that, that it was on the half hour that it was New Year's for them. I honestly, as much as I was joking, I thought it was always on the hour. I didn't know that anywhere was anything more than an, an exact hour difference. So you learn something new every day. Here uh, on our, Heroes Talk. Our friend Rob Giggs, by the way, as you're saying here on Heroes Talk, you can say what you want to say. Our friend Rob Giggs, he's uh, confirming in the chat room, truth, there are half hour differences in time zones. If Rob Giggs says it, I believe it. That I don't believe it. it. So it's 8.34 where Rob Giggs is right now. No, it's 8.30 exactly where he okay. is. He's he's 26 minutes ahead. I'm sorry, Keith. I got I got a little overzealous. I got a little crazy. Why don't you introduce the show? Tell everybody who we are. Tell them what's going on. Give them a phone number. Let them know about the chat room. Which it where am I? This one us. right here? Yeah, yeah, the one? only one. That's it. <laughs> that and our uh, and our, uh, our our two friends, Rob and, uh, and BIS God, are the two people in the chat room. Right All right. Now. So wait a second. So introduce the show. What would I say then? Hey everybody, welcome to Best in Show, Best in Show Radio.com here on Heroes Talk, the thing you do with your ears and the place to be, a magical wonderland, the fantasy cavalcade, all that jazz. If you want to be a part of this thing, you can. Just give us a call, 520-727-7428. That's 
No, wait, no, sorry, 5207-ASS-HAT. Let me try that part one more time. I'm not used to this new number. Uh, if you want to be a part of the show, you can. 520-727-7428. That's 5207-ASS-HAT. Make sense? Good. That's what I would do. I okay. Thanks to everybody for joining and being a part of this. My name is Chris. I'm going to be here for, I'm going to say, roughly 45 to 50 more minutes. Uh, if I look to my left. Uh, Eastern? You're going Eastern time zone? It doesn't make a difference. If I look to my left, I see my friend. I see a partner. I see a, 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 an emotional uh, anchor for the show. His name's James. What's up, buddy? How are you? I try to bring levity. You do. You do. You add, a, a, you add an air of levity without question to this program. What about you? That's it. Okay. Who's this guy? Me? Keith? Why, I'm, On my left. I'm just Keith. That's all I am. Welcome to me. We got it. You're to my right, though. And if you do want to get in touch with us, aside from the phone number, if you want to maybe give us a, a, a Hey Guys, we're still doing Hey Guys, right? We absolutely are. Okay. If you want to send us a Hey Guys or a shopping list question you want to ask or uh, something you want me to read on the air, sorry. I, I need the, a pop filter. There's lots of noises that are happening in this room. We're, we're so not used to this mic being here. We're used to it being like a, a camera on the other side of the room. It was so much nicer. And I'm used so, to not being heard, too, so I can do whatever I want. So I actually much, talk to myself sometimes. So much more forgiving. You can send it to hey guys at bestinshowradio.com. Oh, we do really? <laughs> <laughs> Interesting, as Chris points to the bottom of the screen. What do you mean? It's for those in audio land that don't know. Oh, no one's going to listen to this For the people thing. in the Pacific time zone. I will say that our friend Vealtrop, if he actually still listens to the show or ever listens to the show again, I think he'll be pleased because I think the audio quality is going to sound dramatically better than it has over the past uh, year or whatever it is that we've been And doing. I think we argue more. Now? Yes. Oh, okay. Well, no. I, I, well, yes, we do. No, we I don't. said we didn't. Yeah, it's. A, I think it's a, an added bonus to the show. Well, whatever. So it's here. By the, by the way, you brought, the, you brought all that beef jerky. Um... I'm angry because this morning I was listening to the radio, um, and they were talking about. Uh, I was listening. Is, is my my crackling killing you? I'm just sitting enjoying the program, Keith. I don't know what you're. I talking I don't know about. why I continuously, after all these years, look at Chris when all he does is distract me while I talk, and yet I just keep continuously looking at him. I dis- you find it erotic. I distract him while he talks by sitting here and having facial expressions. That I distracted you. I guess. Technically, that's the definition of what you're doing. But anyway, I was listening to the radio as I do on my way to work. Was it vegan radio? <laughs> no, no, no. But it was a different time zone because I listen to BBC Six every morning. Oh, that's vegan jelly radio. Yes. <laughs> and, uh, and they were talking about a soda, which I never heard of, called Vimto. And I really desperately wanted to get some. And there's a store on Hudson Street in this city of New York called Myers of Keswick. And I and they sell a lot of uh, uh, English Vimto? food products, and they have that soda. And I meant to get it at lunch, and I forgot. So next week, or with something else, I guess we should address next show. I'm going to bring uh, some Vimto soda for you guys to try, and some at, Vegemite at me as well. Please I think don't. that's Australian. Please don't bring Vegemite because Vegemite is quite disgusting. I've had it before; not a fan. I just know that it's in a Minute Work song. That's right, why I think it's Australian. Well, yeah, because they make a Vegemite sandwich. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's not. It's not good stuff. It tastes pretty, pretty goddamn awful. What is it? It's like a. Uh, I'm trying. It's to like think. Nutella. No, it's like <laughs> no. kind of. It's kind of. It tastes like gross. It tastes. It tastes almost like a. Um, it tastes like you would imagine plastic mixed with like like it has like that plasticky taste to it, but it's like a thick honey consistency. Really gross. It's really disgusting. Okay, well, I won't get any of that, but I will. I'll bring some treats. I'll bring some treats. They'll probably be extremely expensive because they are being imported. But you know, Ve- Vegemite you can get at any supermarket. Yeah, I don't want that. I want Vimto. Vimto soda. I thought maybe one of you guys had tried it. I, for some reason, I thought James was going to say, "Oh yeah, I, I I drink a Vimto every other week." <laughs> <laughs> I, I have it with my soy honey mix. What's that stuff called again? Those not, so, not, the fermented not too, soybeans. Not, no, not, it's soybeans. No, it's yeah, but, fermented soybeans. But was it called oh, natto? Yeah. Well, I had Mets. Brand soda in Japan. Did you? I think How I was sent it? you a picture. Yeah, yeah, you did. That's right. I had a on Best in Show. I've had a uh, the Cabareus wine and the and Schneider cider when there was I Met wines. That. 
couple and of years ago. Cabarets. They were terrible, like the Mets. By the way, our friend Steve the Larper from the DJ Newstyle Show has is, uh, is joined us in the chat room. I'm a little bit excited about this whole chat room aspect of the show. That uh, The idea that there's a phone that people can call if they want to, 520-727-7428. Uh, you know, five two zero seven ass hat if they choose to. It's an exciting, exciting time. In is my he life. excited about Vimto? I don't think he is. I don't think he is. Maybe he'll call and tell us if he is. So uh, anyway, that's what I was looking forward to. The aforementioned hey guys. I know I just licked my lips. I apologize. The aforementioned hey guys. Well, if people are hearing that, they have to understand that I'm going to need to bring my pop filter next week because apparently I'm very mobile Bobby. with the mouth. I actually have a pop filter here. I thought you'd grown to an adult at some point, and we weren't going to have to worry about that. That's all. No, See, I'm not going to do the extra obnoxious actual smacking of the lips because, number one, I don't like it. Number two, it's very unprofessional. And number three, Brian's done that already, so I don't want to steal his bit. Well, you'll do it later inadvertently. Well, that's a whole other issue. Uh, the aforementioned hey guys that I mentioned, if you want to send us one, we have one right now, actually. Boris in New Jersey State. He says... Time out. Didn't we establish that people have to be a little more exact with where they're coming Do you want to not... The only way to punish him is to not read his hey guys. Delete his email. <laughs> <laughs> um, in all honesty, I mean, you know, we'll give him... Well, it doesn't make a difference. We'll just say whatever the hell he said in his email or drink your coffee instead the, the fact is it doesn't make a difference because uh, they're going to ignore us and we haven't been here for a bunch of weeks anyway even though we tried last week and I think there's a version of a show from last week out here I'm not calling that episode 300 I'm going to call this episode 300 if that's alright with you guys yep I agree episode 300 agreed James yeah why not or do you want this to be 301 you want last week to be 300 the Maggie show yeah I think just Maggie and Ron is episode 300 <laughs> okay that's fine. So this, then, all right, then this is episode... be two ninety nine and a half. No, this will this will be episode three hundred one. That's a good point. Let's just do two ninety nine A B C till we get to Z, and then we'll when then we'll reconsider. All right, we'll regroup. Well, Boris in New Jersey State, big state. Don't know where he is, but he asks, "Hey guys, at what age are you guys going to start planning for your funerals?" I don't want a funeral. I, I first of all, I didn't know that you even planned for that. Okay. I'm taken back by a couple of things there. One, like you said, planning for funerals. Who does that? Uh, but more taking me back was was Jimmy saying he doesn't want a funeral. No. Oh, I don't either. But you have family. You have a kid. That's why. You're, you don't want your kid to be able to say her goodbyes to you. Do you want to put her through that? That's the but whole point. I'll be, I'll put her through it. She doesn't have to like lift him. I'll okay. Be dead. Do you? You know what does that mean? Do you want what her is to her, go through what that? Is, what is her goodbye? What's it going to change, me being in a box in front of her? It's just a traditional thing where she's able to, to look at you and cry a little bit. You, you know, at your rotting you, face. Sorry, you know what a funeral means to family? It means that... It's at, fun for real. At one of their weakest emotional times, they now have to... Entertain. Coordinate entertaining and having a party, basically, and having people come from out of nowhere and handling stuff. And it, it's just, it's, it's the opposite of what somebody that should be able to do when they want to grieve. You do it six months to a year later. Except maybe you're doing it to distract the person, to force them to focus on other things so they don't sit and wallow yeah, like you monsters. know what? That was going through my head while That's, I was yeah, saying it. Decide. Do you want the $15,000 casket or the $20,000 with the plush lining? Well, that's a whole other issue, or, too. Or did, your, or did the deceased actually have the wherewithal to have life insurance to take care of something like that so you don't have to pick? You still have to pick if you have life insurance. Not if you have a will and you've planned out accordingly. Well, apparently, we have a caller. Calling into the hottest of all lines here on Best in Show, Best in Show Radio dot com. Who's this? Is this the hottest of all lines? In, indeed, it is the it's hottest. It's work. Who is that? It's, it's someone that sounds like a robot. Who's that? Actually, it's uh, your old pal, Rob Giggs. Rob Giggs, you sound so much like a robot. What's going on, buddy? How are you? He's auto tuned. You sound like a robot. You one hundred percent do. My phone? Are you talking uh, on your? Wait. Are you talking on your cell phone that is actually streaming the show? I think that no. Means... Oh, okay. No, 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 no. Hold on, hold on. It sounds kind of cool. I like it. I'm big into robots. Any better? No. Oh, worse. No, so bad. Yeah, worse. It's, yeah. It's it's it might be. It might be on our side. It's probably well, it's just the chat room. Yeah, I mean, we we can't hear you though. We can make out what you're saying. You just sound a little bit weird. It's fine. You're you're the robot man. So what's going on, buddy? Um, it's horrible planning your death thing. Well, not planning your death. 
<laughs> planning, planning the funeral. We're not planning death. <laughs> That's next, hey, guys. Um, I guess, you know what I would want to add on to that would be, you know, if you don't have a will, if you don't have a, a grave plot already uh, purchased, then if you die, who's going to be responsible? Who's your heir so that's going to be responsible to do everything, you know? Agreed 100%, Rob. That's what I was just saying to uh, where I was just uh, suggesting to Jimmy right here was the fact that, like, you got to have life insurance. I and have life will. insurance and, and I have a will. And does your will specify anything about your your uh, your plans for the afterlife? No. Or for the for the post life? No, I don't. Yeah, so you should probably take that into consideration. I will. Mm-hmm. What What about you, Rob? Do you have a Do you have a? Uh... You know what? Let me let me uh, let me try uh, calling back on the uh, the cell this time. All right, bud. Less robotic. Okay. <laughs> Thanks. You were I... starting to sound better towards the yeah, end. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Hey, now that it's almost listenable, I'm gonna go. <laughs> I'm gonna call you from my toilet bowl with a megaphone. <laughs> Well, in the meantime, yes. Well, do you want some big, glorious spectacle for you? Kind of. Hey, it's Best in Show. Who's this? Hey, it's Rob. Better? It oh, actually is a little better. A little bit better, yeah. It's still weird. There's something, there's something up a little, there. A little bit better, but weird. All right, so that, I'm not sure if it's... Uh, it's not you. Either I'm turning into a robot. Yeah. <laughs> I, I think you might be turning into um, a robot. <laughs> Well, actually, you know what? It's, it's interesting because, um, you know, I recently was laid off in the uh, industry. It was downside. And um, my condolences. I had my life insurance with my, eh, you know. Did you have a funeral for your career at that point? <laughs> he had a funeral no, for no his funeral. human body before he went cyborg. <laughs> okay, so, so you're saying you, you recently um, got laid off. But, but my life insurance was with my job. So technically, as of the first, you know, that was it. You know, no life insurance. So was it a term you know, policy? Oh, you had a term exactly. You had a term policy that your company was yeah. paying for. Yeah, it was a term. And the problem, you know, and I was, I, I'm used to working for jobs for 12 years or you know, big long gaps, and um, and I would just automatically get another term life with that employer. But I guess it's kind of irresponsible having three kids and you know have no life insurance right at this moment. So I'm going to want to have a separate policy. Um, but anyway, so these are the things. You know, you brought up planning a funeral, so to speak, and yeah, you write a starts with life insurance, and then whether or not you could afford to buy your own plot, you know, where, uh, yeah, I, you know, I, I, I think back in the days, that's what my parents, you know, they would buy a plot or two plots, and you decide, my mom always says, oh, find out, just call this number, call the funeral home, and they'll know exactly what to do. they take care of everything, you know? Well, you see, uh, me, my preference Yes, I have life insurance. I've had it my own independent policy for since the week my daughter was born. Um, and I would rather her have an extra twenty five thirty thousand dollars than to spend it on me being put into a box and being in a funeral home, which I really don't care about. Um, or having any sort of religious service, which I could care even less about, um, it just doesn't. It, it nothing about it appeals to me at all. It's a very outdated. Uh, uh, I think it is a very outdated uh, ceremony. It's like greeting yeah. cards. It's gross. It's stupid. And I've got to be honest. I feel like my eyes have been opened a little bit by uh, by our friend Jimmy here. I. I I think maybe no, no, no wake, no funeral. Or if okay, and if you so do cremation it, is, is, is would you do you want to be buried or do you want to be cremated? Buried? Cremated, okay, yeah, de- definitely cremated. That was without saying. But I, I was thinking I was going to do a wake and a funeral and then get cremated. I don't want to be buried. But but now I'm saying maybe no even <laughs> no no wake or funeral even. So, yeah, to me it's just a, a a wasted expense and it's a a. a Stress on the to me, I see it as a an, a burden on the family to have to do it. I know you see it as a distraction. Uh, I just don't see that as as part of a healthy grieving process. But what is a healthy grieving process? I don't think that's. I don't know if there is, but I don't know if that's necessarily part of it. But but that's what I'm saying. Like, what is what is healthy versus not healthy? It's, I don't know that it's any more or less healthy than, than uh, to do it or to not do it. I don't you know what I okay. think you should get? I think you should get more than four days uh, bereavement time from your job too. Well, that's that's, that's, a, that's another whole that's another whole issue. 
I'm bringing it up. Yeah, I, I'm saying that's another. <laughs> I'm saying that's that's a, that's another whole issue. That's Best I mean, in Show Radio gives you two months bereavement time. Right, but that's you we're talking about. See, oh, I got news for you. If I die. I hope you broadcast that day, whatever day it is. You, you've been very clear about that numerous times. I would actually, while I'm dying, rather than give me CPR and save me, I'd rather you start broadcasting, well, Chris is dying now, and let me die right there at that moment. To the point that I always think, oh, if Chris dies, I'm going to have to immediately like round up everybody and do a show. Uh, well, this becomes a sports show. <laughs> <laughs> oh my! What do you think now, Chris? Oh my God! <laughs> For those of you that are not, we're not in the chat room live, and that means uh, the, those of you that are not our, our friend Bis God and Rob Giggs, who's on the phone at the moment. Uh, the the good ten minutes before the show, fifteen minutes before the show, it was nothing but Keith and James going back and forth asking what so and so's batting average, career batting average was. And I, I can't make this up. It, it, infuriating and you guys are oh, we don't talk about sports so much you don't realize i guess you realized and you did it intentionally this week but that wasn't such like a stretch i don't know we talk about sports a lot we yeah. text about it too yeah, i know Congratulations. Well, a, a a a tremendous man passed away in, in sports today who meant a lot to us so we used sports statistics to 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 grieve so you're tying it all in together you got the death aspect you got the Rob gigs on the phone aspect when we're talking about a tremendous uh, part of our life, and and you've got the uh, sports aspect in and, talking about batting averages. And Chris, I can't imagine that kindness corner wasn't a big part of your childhood. It hundred percent was, hundred percent was. As soon as I was talking, as we were talking about it at work, I mentioned kindness corner. As soon as, uh, as soon as I was like, oh, kindness corner, and the kid who sits across from me is like, huh? And now, I'm like, dude, for, you're thirty. You don't know what kindness corner is. It's not like you're like twelve. Now, to me, what's a better celebration of his life? Kneeling in front of his casket, saying a hail mary, or going over sports statistics? <laughs> Rob, I believe that question was for what? you. Statistics. <laughs> um, what about people that want to have like closure? You know, or like, yeah, their, I, you know, people would be their condolences or, or have closure there. I say, uh, she passed away, and then your daughter didn't get to see you, you know, and then she, the last time she saw it was never, and, and now it's like she doesn't, you know, to see, unless you're going to have a small private doing before you get burned up, uh, you know. I hope this is recording this way. I, I hope so too. Uh, I'm going to say this, Rob, to be, <clears throat> to be 100% clear here. Uh, giving someone the chance to say goodbye and remember you uh, because they didn't see you before you die. What they're seeing when they see you in a funeral home is you with your eyes sewed shut and cardboard under your shirt and a ridiculous amount of makeup oh. to try and make you look pink. A different so, person half the time. Well, I'll say this. My grandfather, the week before he died, looked like a creepy monster. The day that he died... He looked all right. He lo I'm not that he died. The day in the funeral home, he looked all right. Different granted, person. <laughs> granted, yeah, exactly. I didn't hate him. Um, but he didn't have like uh, he, he didn't look exactly like he did in life, but he looked better. Um, but I do remember I do remember seeing stitches in his eyelids. That's and that's something that I'll never forget. I'm just that well, creepy like see them? caked on makeup look. I just I, I don't like it. And I, I've been to a, a million funerals. Um, Typically, when I go, I go you know, share, you know, I, I say something to whoever I'm close with there, you know, I'm sorry, and then I leave. I don't stick around. I don't, I don't do the whole, you know, saying a prayer for them or just kind of standing in small pockets and talking amongst <laughs> each other. I just... I don't know. <laughs> Steve Larper is declaring in the chat room, put it in your will, Chris. Cryogenically freeze your brain, burn the rest. <laughs> Can we have like a little ceremony? Yeah, hey, I'm gonna uh, get off the line here, Mr. Robot Man. But you know, maybe you should talk about planning your own death as opposed to planning your own funeral. Good, great. To my high one all die. You know, people want to die old age. That's fun. Okay, we'll, we'll get into it. Guys, good, good, good to see you. Thanks for being the first caller. Thanks for the for the for the first return call to Best in Show. We got to get you. Uh, we got to get you in here. Uh, awesome, our buddy yeah. Bobby G. Oh, Bobby G, the, the man who used to write the ship here on Best in Show, bestinshowradio.com. Exciting, exciting robotic now call. He's a robot. I love that he's he's talking about uh, the best part is that you said I you, uh, uh, James, you said I hope it's recording that way because he's talking about like funerals and saying goodbye, and I'm just giggling like an idiot because all I hear is a robot. Voice. <laughs> 
Um, to his point, uh, or, or what he was saying, he was saying, what about not being able to say goodbye? And, that's, and I think that's exactly what James was addressing before, is the fact that he doesn't believe that that's necessarily a healthy way to say goodbye. I don't know if it is. I don't know if it isn't. I know that it's tradition, and I don't know if tradition necessarily makes something right. It just makes it what I guess we're used to. But I, I bought in. I bought in. The idea of leaving more money to my kid, I'm out. Let me ask Screw you a question. I'm, getting, I'm changing my will. Let me ask you a question. By the way, whole life insurance. Don't get caught in the in the shit that uh, that Rob's caught in with the term stuff. Get yourself a whole life policy or a universal life policy so that the money you're putting in is actual real money. Otherwise, you're renting. Exactly. Don't pay a mortgage. You're not a rent. What, what's your question, Keith? Uh, if you go to a funeral, do you kneel down at the coffin? Okay, but is that his? I thing, just said is that, that a religious thing, though? I just said shit like two minutes ago, and I didn't want to say fuck, so I so I I just mouthed it to you. There's no, I don't even go up to the coffin. I stay far. Now, does that vary depending on who the person is? Yeah. If I'm at a funeral of somebody I never met, I'm not going anywhere near the coffin. Agreed. If I'm at a funeral of a family member, I feel uh, I'll take a look. obligated. Obligated. Yes, thank you. Very tough word to remember. I feel obligated to go up there, but I just normally will go up there and I'll kneel down and I'll just say to myself quietly, "Okay, I'm sitting here now, and I'm, I'm uh, and, uh, and 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 at some point, like, I'll just apologize. I'm sorry. I have no idea why I'm doing this. Like, like I just can't. I don't. I'm not. I can't just go up there and I. I don't know. Do most people? I guess everyone does something different. I assume most people pray or or speak to the person. But I, I just can't, it's, I just feel like I'm count one Mississippi, two Mississippi. Well, those are those are the people that are what the French call dumb, and they think that they're talking to a magic thing in the sky that is somehow making them be able to talk via a conduit to that person that's dead. Four seven in I France right now. I don't think that anyone needs to have a box in front of them to say goodbye to somebody. It's no different. You're saying goodbye to a piece of lumber with with flesh in it yeah and the last image the last image being that dead weird it's 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 yeah i agree i'd rather not my daughter see me sewn up and makeup up as her last image why don't you go the other route have them not sell you because there's a whole this <laughs> oh, is, natural <laughs> this is what i'm thinking this is as all, is the as is plan. this is what i was thinking the whole my whole concept with the whole idea is like what you're doing with your you know uh like uh, what was our caller's name igor or boris, boris. The spider he wanted to know what uh what our funeral plans were what was the exact question uh he are wanted you, to know what age we start planning for our funeral yeah okay I'm saying make your plan B to the different uh ways that you could position yourself for your wake Something like that. Because I know there's a whole gimmick of like people that pose, like to get themselves in positions, like to be hanging around in a house while they're dead. You, you've seen that whole thing, right? No. I have no <laughs> idea what you're talking about. Yeah. I've seen people do things where they brought them home to watch a football game and like football and right, their right, favorite right, right. uniform. Yeah. Weekend at Bernie's? Exactly. But Weekend at Bernie's, the wake. And people are hanging out. Three. Right. There are people that are hanging out with the dead dude. And the dead I remember it's for the one I remember is I wanna assume the kid was a crip because or no, maybe it was a blood. Uh, he was I remember he was like he was all like bandanaed out, like and he had his colours on and he was like hanging out in the house, like we're all blinged out and like with his gun in certain pictures. But like his grandmother and his mother were in the pictures with him, like this was the wake, like him in the house. But he was dead the entire time. I feel like you guys are playing a trick on me right no. now. Let's get Keith to believe. No, this. there was also I've seen a, I think it was a Pittsburgh Steeler fan. I saw that too. Same thing. The, the same, I didn't see the crip the thing. same place that he lived. I remember the 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 story behind it was like this is where he loved being more than anything. Like his so his was, recliner and everything at all with his blanket over his legs with this. I, I didn't think it was the Steelers. Sometimes I thought it was the Eagles, but maybe I thought it was the Steelers. Yeah, Pennsylvania. Remember, yeah, exactly. The same crap. Um, wow, that's crazy. That's no, crazy. actually, one has cheesesteaks and the other one has uh, Primati Brothers. Mm. Two, di two different sandwiches. So I, I, I give it to Pittsburgh Quakers. What oatmeal? Are we got oatmeal now. Two seventeen in Pittsburgh right now. Well. Boris, I'm not planning for my funeral. Uh, I guess You're I do. You're free to do it if you I like. I guess I do need 2 to. 217? <laughs> That's the time you came up with? That's the time it is there. 217. So is, is it tomorrow, tonight, or yesterday? Oh, it's a whole lot of things. It's 12. <laughs> it is. It's, I think it's probably yesterday. Uh, sorry, uh, Jimmy, you yeah, were saying Yeah, I, I guess I really got to put that in writing that I, I want no part of it. Don't wake me. Don't wake me. I'm Don't dead. Don't wake me, bake me. 
Yeah. Don't wake me, bake me. Nice. Six fourteen. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know. Uh, I like the idea of, uh, like I said, I guess it's the tradition thing that I'm used to. But I also remember. See, I think I'm. Uh, I'm adding a you lot. Like, you like spectacle. I'm adding a lot to the conversation when I go, you know, eh, about that? Eh. I love that you extended the conversation to do that. <sighs> yes. yes. Yes, I did. You know, my, you, know what, you know what other options that they have for you out there? You can have yourself turned into a diamond. Really? They burn your body down and they take all the ash. Oh, so somebody could wear you. And they diamond. turn you into a crystal. Oh. And they push it down, and my ex-wife wants herself turned into a diamond for our daughter. I think it's a little creepy, but hey. That's not too bad. Go on with your bad self. That's, that's not too bad. That's what you want to do. It's fine. It's what if it bad. was in my will that I wanted to be stuffed and on one of your mantles? <laughs> like, just my head. Would you, like, all, all kidding aside, which is ridiculous to say... What if you found out, like I died, and you found out that it was in my will that I wanted one of the members of Best in Show Radio to have my head on their mantle? I would add a prosthetic nose and make you Mr. Burns. <laughs> I kind of look like him sometimes anyway, from a side view. If we had, uh, if I had uh, done enough planning and figured out exactly all the producer things, me. all the producer things that we should do right about now is when you should be playing some sort of music and we play a commercial, right. and then we go into the next half of the show. But I didn't do that. So... Was, was was that song that was playing? When the weather gets warm. <laughs> <laughs> What's wrong with this one? That was funny oh, to was a couple of people in you. And I also said weathers. You're listening to Best in Show Radio on the Heroes Talk Radio Network. David? The thing to do with the ears and the place to be, yes. One of the ugliest men ever. You can reach us at 520. That's 520. 727-7428. Or with that other number. Guys, what's that other number? Because I'm too mature to say it. 5207-ASS-HAT. I, I will say that if you call us with that number, fairly good chance you're going to sound like a robot. Exactly. Sure, but, but. I thought that's the selling point. Oh, okay. okay. If you've never auto-tuned yourself, now's the time to call in. <laughs> sing to us. Sing to us, and then listen to the recorded version next week. Awesome, awesome. By the way, Steve Larper was suggested uh, was suggesting an addition to uh, me getting my brain cryogenically frozen and burning the rest. He wants a, a shrunken head Keith to, to <laughs> I guess, to keep the keychain. I have guess. a little head anyway, so that won't be too much you of a... You don't have a little head. You've got a... Uh, you just got... I have a little head. I think I have a little head. I'm going to say both of you guys, average human-sized heads. No. I have a little nose. Uh, little Tiny little nose. nose. Little cute, cute as a button. <laughs> cute as a little button. Here on Best in Show, <laughs> bestinshowradio.com. The thing you do with the ears and the place to be. Here on Heroes Talk. For some reason, you said cute as a button, and I giggled and looked away. Because well, you're cute. forever. Do you know why? <laughs> because you're cute as a button. That's what you do. You're cute as a button. That's the way you say it when you're cute as a button. If you want to send us a hey guys, send it to hey guys at bestinshowradio.com. And you know what? We got another one coming in. Oh, it's coming in right now. <laughs> what happened? We just we just doing the the the, uh, the dueling banjos songs are. <laughs> Miss Manners in the USA. <laughs> Ooh, nice name. Asks, hello, gentlemen. Hello. Do you consider yourselves courteous? I helped a dude push a car today. His oh. car. So you're that's like courteous. A, so you're more like so a superhero. Then. Yes. To me, I don't know if that's so much courteous. It's just like a thing a dude's supposed to do. Did you know the guy? No. Will you? Well, how? Wait, tell us. How did this happen? I was crossing the street by after uh, lunch, going back to my office. Crossing his T's, dotting his eyes. And this dude was trying to push his car by himself up the street, one way street. So first you laughed at him with no one driving. No. Wow. He was had the driver's side door open uh, trying to steer. That way. And it's a big Dark Chrysler 300, which is a pretty heavy car. You know why? The owner of the car took the keys with him, so it was hard to move. Dude, how about I pushed my van that way by myself? It was the worst thing in the world. I got it about halfway down the block, and it was a horror show. Yeah, pushing cars, not fun. Yeah, and then uh, he ran out of gas. Like, Can you help? He's like, sure. He's like, Can you help me push it over there? I ran out of gas. No. <laughs> and then I just you wanted to away. know. Just wanted to know if you wanted the help, no, sucker. I, I am one of the most courteous people on the planet. I will say that right now. Could you let him tell his car pushing story? I'm done. It was done. That didn't seem done to me. 
helped him push his car. And scene. But you didn't see him say, and that's it, I pushed his car? Then I stuck out my hand. Do you ever think I would in interrupt you James? Didn't, he and, didn't I, and I rubbed my fingers together. Right, right. When you, he said, that's the smallest violin ever. Um, yeah, I, don't, I didn't feel him say, that's the end. I thought there was more to the story. Now you got me second-guessing myself. I feel like I interrupted. You did. When I know deep down I didn't, because well, I'm too no, courteous. He interrupted you, not interrupting. Yeah. Well, I, he's but, not courteous. No, so. I'm expected to do that. Yes, and you did do it. I do do so it. So everyone's exactly where they should be. Right. <laughs> living up to expectations. Setting expectations low and living up to them. It's best in show. It's what we do. I'm going to say that, Keith, you might be courteous. I'm very courteous. But to an extent, because now you got me thinking, because you Because when you just cut off James, as I'm cutting off you right now, didn't seem so courteous to me. You've mentioned how you will uh, stand... Uh, if if a woman gets on the bus, you will always stand and give her your seat. Absolutely. I will not do that. A pregnant woman, sure. An old woman, sure. A child. Uh, a child, sure. Teen child. No. Uh, I'll get up for anybody. If it's a woman, I'll get up. I won't, if it's a, a teen boy, I won't get up. A teen girl, I'll get up. Absolutely. Is that courteous? Chivalrous. I'll do you one more. When there are seats on the bus and I get on... Except for this express bus, because I'm going to be on it for like a month and a half. But like on a local bus, I don't even bother sitting down. Like well, I don't I, either. I get on the bus and I stand the entire way. I just hate sitting on the local bus. There's too much, there's too much traffic, too much going on. Dust all over the place and clumps of whatever. They all smell like McDonald's. I don't oh, ride buses, God. so I really don't I'm give a, up seats. I'm a baller. I have a car. <laughs> Johnny Fancy over here has a car. There's always a guy and with a, a basketball on the local bus, <laughs> so I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> no. I'll hold doors for everybody. How about you? Will you hold a door for a dude? Hold it open for him to walk through? No, yes. hold it open for him to grab for himself? Yes. I'll what if keep it open. What if you're coming out, he's coming in, will you do the old, uh, hey, buddy, go ahead? Yes. Yes, that's okay. it. If we're going in the same direction, though, I won't I won't stop there. oh, after you, but I will for a woman. But for a guy, like, I'll go through and I'll keep my hand back and hold it open. That's, okay, let me ask you That's pretty much this. what I do. Mm-hmm. If you're walking out and you hold a door for someone and they walk through and don't say anything and the next person starts to walk through, guys, guys, all guys. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Say, say that again, say it again. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to understand the setting. You're walking out of a store, say. Or, you hold the or door Keith's open. Keith's bedroom. Either way. You're walking out, you hold the door open, a guy walks through. Holding the door, but in which way? Holding it for him to take, but instead of taking it, he just walks right through. Oh, okay. okay. Another guy comes, he looks like he's about to do the same thing. What do you do? I'm asking because it's happened to me quite a few times as, as specific a thing it is. I have what a feeling you do the same thing. What kind of a position would you be in to constantly be holding that door? This is a video medium. I'm going to show you. That's why he's late to work by two hours every day. <laughs> so what you're doing is you walk out, right? So what Keith's doing is he walks out. You hold the door open. You hold the door open. You're expecting him to take it from you. He walks right out. You're expecting him to like, take whoa. it from you, and he walks right out, and you say, whoa, Here where did that go? Here comes another guy. He's walking through, too. He's walking through. By, the way, by the way, this video medium, the, what you're displaying for the video medium is you stood up to tell the story, and you're not doing anything. <laughs> why, why don't I'm you actually like, enact it? I'm holding the door. No, you're standing there looking like you're about to fall over. You're not showing anything right. to the camera. Okay, here we go. So here I go. I walk out. So here he goes. He walks out. Wait, mirror image. I'm holding the door. Mirror image. I'm holding the door. All right. This All right. Guy, this guy. Wait, where's the door? Hold Wait, where's the door? Hold on. Stop. Stop. I hold the door open. The guy walks through. Instructions by Keith. The next guy's coming. The next guy's coming. Ugh. <laughs> the next guy's coming through. That's enough of a video medium. I'm going to say it might have been the worst worst use of the video medium ever. <laughs> you actually should have opened the door, walked outside for the video medium, and explained it. <laughs> What I normally would do, and it's happened a few times, I'll just drop the door on the second person because I'm not a doorman. I was wondering if you do the same thing or if you've never been in that situation. I don't think I've ever been in that situation. Really? It's happened quite a few I don't times know what the, to me. The logistics of it is, I, I don't, I'm never in the, I don't, I, it, those logistics don't make sense that I would be in a place that I would be holding as opposed to be walking. And okay, yeah, imagine. He means a revolving door. No, no, no. Which I have a problem with that term. Or an escalator. <laughs> You don't hold escalators for people, do you? How, uh, do you? how do you hold an escalator? Well, you hail it for him, like I can. <laughs> well, that, I'll do that, yeah. to be, for a woman. To be clear, had the biggest problem in the world with the, with the term uh, revolving door. It's a rotating door. Why do people call it a revolving you, door? You've discussed I it I hate length. you. 
Oh, I'm sorry. What do you call I, the discussing it again? What do you call the table that you, it sits in front of your couch? Typically, coffee table. No. Armoire. It's a cocktail table. Oh, I didn't know that. And you. Guess what? I have neither. What's, What's right that? there? What do you have there? Nothing. What is it? That's Keith's old chair. His the old high okay, chair. So he used what, to sit what do you on? call it? I call it Keith's old high chair, and it doesn't usually sit in front of the couch. Is it, it a rotating sit. chair? No, and it sits next to the couch usually. Okay, so a look. revolving chair. Neither. Okay, the look. Folding chair. Here's the doors to the store, right? You push this one open. You hold it. Somebody <laughs> walks through it. You can't imagine that? Now here no, comes no, another no, no. person. Whoa, 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 whoa. They, with their feet. Whoa, 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 whoa. Slow down, egghead. Now explain to me here which side of the door are you on. This is the inside of the store. Nope, that's not what I asked. Here, try this again. I'm on this side. Wait, here's I'm the, on this side. Okay, there we go. Okay, now. So his head is his body. Door. Okay. I'm going to push this door, right? It opens. I'm now Doors do it. not work that way, but okay. Oh, if you have the handicap button. If you have the handicap button, it, it, it folds into the wall next okay, to it. I'm sorry that my hands aren't designed in a better way to, to explain this, but... With motion? Here's the two doors. Here's the with two the doors. To move. Right, so you push the door, right? So it opens up like that. You don't understand that? Put your hands up. Put your hands up the way you are. The hinges for that door are on the thumbs, not on the pinky side. So it doesn't turn from here. It turns from here. That's the way it but the turn. point the point is this is this is the two ends of the door and it's opening up. There you go. And it's going out. Right? Okay, so I'm holding it now. I'm so now you're on this side of now the door. Now I'm holding I'm standing right here with my arm holding it for the next person to and take the And where's the, the door. next person coming from? He's from coming the inside? Here. He's coming from you the let inside. Go. You let go. Okay, that's what I did. I let it the one guy got through, wow. the next guy comes and I, I let it drop on him. Our friend, our friend Steve the Larper says he understands what Keith is saying. I just let go of the doors. Oh, we God, no more we, visuals, please. We understood, too. Uh, 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 just making uh, uh, it difficult uh, uh, groups, on Keith. Uh, groups of douchebags doing that. Yeah, um, I, I don't know. The door holding thing to me doesn't, doesn't necessarily express courtesy. I just so what's courtesy to you? I don't know, like getting up on the bus, you know, letting people, letting people sit. I guess... Uh, not interrupting people? Yeah, I don't know how to do that. Um, never claimed to be courteous. Uh, Will you tie someone's shoe for them? Absolutely. Um, how about at work? Are you courteous at work? Uh, to a degree. To do a you degree. do a lot of favors for people? To a degree. To a degree. Not, I, I do mean, that. I'm at a new job, so I'm not. I'm not like we're not in the position that I really know how to do all the favors. I'm still learning. Um, You're a please and thank you person. No. I'm really, I'm really terrible with that at work. At home, I am because I want to instill that in my daughter. Um, I know that I don't like Asian ladies when they want to get on a bus or train because no matter where you just you, took this to an ugly place. Because no you? matter what, they want to squirt underneath your armpit and try and run in and grab that seat in front of you. Those are the people that I want to sit down instead of letting them sit down. And, Do you and just I, sit down on them? I should. They make me very angry. I don't know why it's a, it's a it's a specifically older Asian lady trait. And it's the same lady. Oh, is that it? Is that <laughs> yeah. it? And every yeah, like I'd say fifty or an older Asian lady. Is the she worst lives by my job. She knocks into me every day when I'm walking. She's always trying to sell me CD DVD too. I don't understand. Right after she sits down and, and then, then she sneezes. Uh, sorry. Yes, apparently she does. I know. Just wondering. I'm just. I don't know what I'm just wondering, but I'm just wondering. So we're all courteous. Fellas. I think I'm a courteous guy. I think you're a courteous guy. I think uh, I think courtesy is a uh, is a thing. <laughs> wow. Well, what? I don't know. I just didn't know where to go from there. I don't know. You you, you this you by brought the way, in a healthy dose of racism. That's all here, we needed. <laughs> well, exactly. What else we need? This is when we we used to record the show. Um, we used to record the show uh, and then and then play it after the fact. This would be the segment when right after we'd hit stop, we'd say, "Yeah, we're not doing that one. Let's just throw that one out and we'll do let's do another segment." That only That's happened, that. I think, maybe twice. 20, 20, 30 times. <laughs> no, 20. absolutely not. Out of the out of the fifty shows, well, how many shows do you think we did? Uh, thirty the, or forty. Out of the thirty or forty shows that we did, I think we did ninety five recordings, and I think I think Are more you? I think more than half we threw out. No. Wow, he's going back and just soiling our entire product. 
Oh yeah, well, legacy. Yeah, I'm more, If there's a legacy there, destroy it. I steroids. Think, I this think, is his steroids. You know what? Because in the old days, I'd say, "Yo, give us a call at seven one eight three six zero one four one three. What's that?" But instead, now I'm saying, "Give us a call at five two zero seven ass hat." It's best in show. Best in show dot com. I'm not sticking with legacy. I'm moving to the future. Maybe three fifteen minute segments we scrapped. I think it's a little more than that, but not many more. Maybe four or five, realistically. Uh, absolutely, absolutely. I'm just. My point wasn't to to create the legacy. My point was, oh my God, did we really force them to live through those last fifteen minutes with us? That's more what I was thinking because that was uh, horrific and I hate it. It's Miss Manners' fault, to be honest. Uh, I, no, I think I think Miss Manners had a had a good uh, idea. We just didn't know what to do with it. Just designate her to spam. <laughs> So you can no, no longer receive emails from her. That's the danger of the Hey Guys, which you can send to heyguys at bestinshowradio.com. Send us a question, comment, thoughts, shopping list. Oh, you we'll read new, it all. We'll discuss it. And when you do, yeah, you, you have a new phone? Oh, wow, you fancy. It's a 5S. I don't know what any of that means. Our, our, uh, and when you do, apparently we'll read it on the air. We'll talk about it here. Uh, Steve the LARPA will comment in the chat room. He'll mention things like uh, anyone who expects courtesy... Uh, to be done for them doesn't deserve the courtesy. You know, things like that will happen in the chat room. Well, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a magical thing. I Imagine. disagree. I Ex- expect? I expect when someone walks through a door that they wouldn't just let it go in my face. Why wouldn't you put your hands up? I put my hands out. Right. Put your hands up. I expect them to. Eh. Expect the least except uh, expect the worst except the least don't well, you hate when you hold the yeah. same door when you have to hold a door for a person three oh i'm sorry when somebody holds a door for you like three times like three separate doors and you have to keep saying thank you thank you thank you oh usually i would they hold it for me i'll go past them then i hold the next door <laughs> you for knock them, them down again no, no, that's, 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 yeah, that's, that's a very good it's, point it's open door leapfrog 100 percent. and i've been to many a restaurant with Jimmy, where there have been two doors and the foyer, and that's always the case. One of us will hold the door, then the other one holds the next one. That's I, un- I understand the leapfrog. That's when somebody goes through. I'm talking about when the person just does the hold it and you take it. Oh, no, the and, someone, take. and someone comes through both doors past us as we're holding from, for each other. <laughs> we decided to relive the last 15 minutes with 15 more so minutes good. about doors. <laughs> You guys want to listen to the doors now? Oh, dude, dude. <laughs> I want to listen to the doors while you try and show me how doors work by clapping. <laughs> that somehow is your illustrating doors. Oh, my God. Get but, over but, it. But standing and doing it. Right. Outside. Stand at the, at the front door and clap. And then we'll understand what's happening. We got another Hey Guys right here. Wow. You guys are going for punishment. Run, run that well dry. What do we got? Roth in Indy County. That's not a place. You 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 keep doing that, and and you keep. Uh, I think you keep tempting people to stop making up places because you get so angry. About Indy it. County. Where the hell's Indy County? How's it spelled? Indy County. I like well, Indy Rock. Probably like Indy Rock. Well, he, he wrote it. I N D I E. Yeah. That's stupid. Maybe he's like listens to W. What's his name? Roth. R O T H. Move. Next email. Do you use any embarrassing phrases? Oh my! Yes, Indy County. Heavens to Murgatroyd, do I? Um, yeah. <laughs> All right. Yeah, uh, next day, guys. <laughs> it's from Roth. Also, what are they? Do know? You know, it's funny. My girlfriend always makes fun of me for saying "snack on." Like, oh, no, I'll just, I'll just have like, um, I'll have this to snack on later, and. <laughs> Is that embarrassing? No, apparently. <laughs> First of all, it's. A I thought you were saying I want to get my snack on. <laughs> no, See, no, that no, would that's have been embarrassing. Bad. That's okay. embarrassing. See, I got news for you. I think either one <laughs> is embarrassing. Get your snack on is definitely worse. But the best part about it is knowing your girlfriend thinking of her. Oh, do you want to get your snack? On? Oh, what do you want to snack on? You want to snack on? So just thinking of her face, looking at you saying that is hilarious to me. <laughs> I want to snack on some things. We want, you want to get something to nosh on? I just need <laughs> a little something to nosh. Yeah, I don't say nosh. I don't say nosh. Get, you know, get a bagel to schmear, a nice nosh, and yeah, we have a You go snack. to bagel nosh on Victory and Victory <laughs> Richmond. No, 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 no. You go to bagel, you go to uh, the nosher, and then you go to Canossi Bagels right next to each other. Oh, my God. Canossi Bagels are around the corner from my house. From the nosher, too, right? Wasn't the nosher right there? I don't there remember also? the nosher. He was a guy who used to hang out with us. Oh, the nosher, he was part of that, that white power gang, right? <laughs> 
<laughs> Again with the racism. <laughs> Was that, me? Was, it was, that, it was, that was very life. anti-white was his, of you. It was his life choice. Uh, other embarrassing phrases. You know, did I... We were talking about any, get anything on recently, weren't we? But was that on the show or was that on the bus? Let's get it on. I have a problem. I have a big problem with uh, get my anything on. It, uh. it makes me crazy, like, to get my... Okay, here's the question, though. Is, are, are we talking seriously or... like I almost feel like there's a thing to when something is... Like starts as a joke, that becomes a real it thing. Becomes part of your vocabulary. Like getting something on, like getting a, a thing. Oh, let's get our show on tonight. Like I could see that being a thing. I used to make fun of people all the time who talked about people being dog. What's up, dog? And, and I actually do that now. When I first started at my job, I heard a woman say she was going out. I'm gonna get my groove on. There was nothing ironic about it. It was it was a hundred percent. She yeah. she felt a little cool saying that. And she, she was bit her go bottom her lip while on. saying it. You know what? Come on. She bet her bottom dollar that she was exactly. gonna. <laughs> I'm having a couple. Uh, I'm having a couple of uh, what do we call these shock top spirits tonight. You know what I'm doing? I'm getting my drink on. <laughs> That's what I'm doing. I'm getting my drink on tonight. For some reason, they're talking about gorgeous in the chat. You, room. you I don't and know I, what that means. You and I also have the now, same. You say the word oh, gorgeous you just say that all the time. Yes. Yeah, so what's wrong with that? It's disgusting. Well, I'm saying that's why they're talking about it. But it's not. A, it's not a word to be embarrassed of. It's just. Sure, a word. You, you would say gorgeous always. Oh my god, it's gorgeous. Yeah. What's, what's wrong with some being gorgeous? It's gross. Why is it gross? Yeah, I don't it's know that gross. that's embarrassing. But it's gross. It's a word. <laughs> you don't like that no. word, do you? What's, what's the matter with it's it? It's a word in the English language that is not an embarrassing word. It's a regular word. I understand gross words like split is disgusting, but gorgeous isn't necessarily. Split is not disgusting. Yes, it it's just a word. As in what? Like to split a hot dog Just down the middle. The entire word is gross. Or oh, you know what? I'm gonna go over there. I'm gonna I'm gonna do my my gymnastics routine and I'm ending it in a oh, split. It's almost nine o'clock. I'm gonna split. <laughs> is that, well, okay, that's well, embarrassing. Well, do you want to you want to go to Farrell's? We'll get a banana split. Yeah. Okay. We'll split it. Okay. <laughs> you don't want to go Dutch. You rather just split it. <laughs> I say bail. Nothing ironic. I'm gonna bail. I got no problem with bail. No. Well, Bail's well, good. A little bit of an embarrassing word, but it doesn't bother me. It doesn't bother me at all. Uh, jet. I definitely say jet, although I think that started out as a joke. Making fun of saying jet. I'm going to jet. You're talking about, like, I got a split, I'm going to jet, and what was the other one you said? You're going to bail. bail. There was a guy that I used to work with who was actually, I don't know if I'm, if I'm supposed to talk about people's relationships and lives or something. The actress Cece Pounder, hit her brother, I used to work with him. I don't know who she is. Cece Pounder? I know the name. You'll know her if you see her. She's like, I don't know, some actresses and a bunch of stuff. Look her up on... Uh, I'm going to do that right now. The Google. Um, but Cece Pounder's brother and I uh, used to work together. His name's Ron. Ron Pounder? Ron Pounder. And... Uh, I hardly know her. <laughs> gah, 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 gah. And Ron Pounder, whenever he gets off the phone, says my favorite phrase in the world. And by favorite, I mean the one that makes me wish I was dead and not planning my funeral. Ciao. I hate when people uh, who are Americans. What, what if it's a what if it's an Italian guy in his Vespa? <laughs> oh, ciao! Like then I understand. I understand that guy. But a dude that's not that guy, like a, just a human, an Earth person that is not from a, a place where they speak a different language, and says ciao. Shut up, dude. Uh, Shut up. Love you, Ron Pounder. Really do. Don't want to hear you say ciao. What about gracias? Yeah, you know what? I think any foreign language things irritate me i think anything anything with that amigo oh dude oh could you go back to the last segment of being courteous could you hold that door for me por favor shut up shut up oh man this sucks no bueno shut up oh god what well, come on somebody really says that? you've never heard someone say no bueno no, no bueno that's I, i've probably said no bueno i see that i see that all the time I, that is whack <laughs> <laughs> wait wiggity wiggity by the way i just found out that one of the one of the crisscross guys was dead I didn't yes, you like, didn't know that? Like a year and a half ago, probably. I Ralph Kiner. <laughs> God rest his soul. Chris Cross is corner. Um, and on the uh, on the concept of chow, you uh, you guys a little hungry? You want to get some chow? Oh, that uh, worse. Uh, that worse. embarrasses me. Yeah. That's embarrassing to me. It's not even spelled the same. <laughs> is chow bad. better than grub? <laughs> well, I I, think I hate both. I hate but Grub I, is so unappealing. I hate that there's a delivery service called Grubhub. <laughs> I hate that. I think my, my, my hatred of Grabba is well documented. You guys want to grab a... And it's always a burger, too. You want to grab a burger? Yeah, what else are you going to grab? Uh, well, you can grab a slice. Grab. Give it up. Give it up. <laughs> no, not snatch a burger. <laughs> Grabbing it. 
grab, you won't grab a slice with me? Huh. Some za? <laughs> you, you won't grab some za? No one says za, though. I hate grab so much. Uh, you know, I like to make jokes about things like this, and sometimes my jokes aren't so funny. And Keith, sometimes your jokes aren't so funny, but I know it's a joke, and I want to acknowledge that you tell the jokes. So I go, hardy, har, har. I hate when people say hardy, har, har. That's something that really irritates Somebody me. Somebody said that to you since you were eight years old? Absolutely. I think I was eight years old. Absolutely. They do, 100%. And I definitely use the term smurf. Absolutely. Absolutely, positively. There's no chance it hasn't happened. When I'm out and about. Sometimes someone will say hardy har har, my, one of my dogs, and they'll ask me if I want to grab some chow. Out and about. <laughs> They're mad because you said out and about. <laughs> yeah. I am guilty of it. I texted my sister not a couple of weeks ago. Uh, I'm not actually going to explain why because my dad might watch this show. And we're going to say it might have something to do with DMT. So I'm not going to say anything about that on the air. I didn't say that. Uh, so you didn't text her about DMT is what I you meant didn't, to say. I didn't. And I, but the way that I started the conversation was, yo, you out and about? And, and I looked at the text and got embarrassed, saying, like, ew, you out and about. Like, I feel like a weird creeper. But you know the things you I have I shouldn't feel say- like a creeper texting my cousin, my, my sister, asking her if she can help me get drugs. <laughs> I feel it's like, the grammar. I, That's I the problem. I feel weird that I said you out and about first. Not even drugs. <laughs> DMT of all drugs. <laughs> Although I guess they could be worse things, but... Oh, Steve the Larper in the chat room. People who say LOL or OMG out loud. You've mentioned OMG oh. on the show in the past, Keith. I remember OMG. That. Uh, <sighs> LOL is stupid because the OL is out loud. There was a whole episode of Curb Your Enthusiasm where the guy's wife kept saying, "Ah, oh, LOL, LOL." Never, never. <laughs> I'm unfamiliar with LOL. Don't understand how that show goes. Uh, oh, Steve Lauper also apparently likes the word "coos." I don't know if "coos" is a bad word or a good word. I don't think I'm familiar with that one. <laughs> uh, the House of Coos. You should go back. It's like episode two of uh, of, uh, of Curb Your Enthusiasm. Return to Coosville. <laughs> Uh, when you uh, when you get food at a place, when I, I grab it, you like to grab food. But I'm thinking about this, and I'm embarrassed by the fact that I'm saying it out loud because I just complained about language things and when you do things for other ways. And, and, and part of almost my anglophile thing, I don't like to get takeout. I like to get takeaway, which I think takeaway is kind of an English thing. I love it referring is. to it as getting takeaway, and I do it all the time. And I should be embarrassed about that, but I do. I'm glad you brought that up because do. I've made fun. Be glad, of, I mean, please do be I, glad. I've made fun of people that used to. I knew a few different people that like went to England for brief times and came back excessively ah! using all types of English slang. You want to go ahead and interrupt me? I, usual? I missed it in the chat room before. I'm so grossed out by just chillaxing. <laughs> just but, chillaxing. but does anybody really say that? Yes, they do. <sighs> well, like a, like a, a, a... That's our buddy Bobby G. And uh, and actually, I'm going to say it's a collaboration uh, between Bobby G and Steve LaLarper. Both is that like a chillaxing. dude that's playing a DJ on a Verizon commercial that says chillaxing? Like, do real people really say that? Yes. All right, sorry. I, I, I hear... I wish I just remember more things when I go out because I, I'm Chillax, so bro, annoyed cool. whenever I'm out anywhere. We could revisit things. We could revisit things. I just don't remember people saying things. I'm, I'm wait, always wait, wait. cringing hearing people say things. What do you do? What do you want to do? We'll revisit. We'll roll it back. Why don't we just reboot this? <laughs> 2.0. <laughs> right. Yeah, you want a two dubs? Well, yeah, we'll have this conversation. <laughs> I don't know why the, what the dubs even means. but I love B-dubs. It's my favorite place to eat chicken wings. I love going to Buffalo Wild Wings. I, I call them B-dubs. my favorite place on earth. But I, I was uh, I was watching so much of, of Peep Show and listening to Mitchell and Webb and listening to BBC every single day that after a few months, after like seven or eight months of just every day, I, I actually said out loud at my job, who the hell nicked my pen? And I was like, oh, wait a second. Maybe you do kind of pick up these phrases. I've picked and, up a few and like, things. And I try not to because I hate the person that tries to use those, that forces those things in. Like the, like the ones that uh, our friend Steve has mentioned in the chat room, like going on holiday for things. I love going on holiday. It's like, you know, I, love, yeah. I, I find myself doing the, the, the British thing. And like I said, the fact that... If it, it happens naturally, it's wonderful. When you try to force it in and it's so obvious. How do you know what the difference is? You know what the difference is. No, I'm, I'm asking, how do you know? Uh, I don't know. I just maybe judge. Nancy I went, judge. Maybe Nancy went to London and you don't know what's going to happen. <laughs> no, she didn't actually do it. <laughs> I don't know. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. The, the, like I said, holiday I don't do. I definitely do takeaway. 
And as far as stealing, as far as thinking getting nicked, I always go back to 80s skater freestyle biker slang when, and things get vicked all the time for me. Oh, yeah. oh man. That payphone yep. vicked my quarter and I didn't even get to make the call. Yep. Actually, it vicked a dime. It <laughs> strangled it and electrocuted it? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I uh I also oh that was the other one. Nicked wasn't nearly as bad as when I said rubbish. <laughs> that one I had to stop myself from saying that. There was a skate video in the nineties called Rubbish Heap. So I, I, I find myself saying rubbish. I think I've rubbish said rubbish on a And on again, a few and again it's wonderful really... when it happens naturally, but I I, I, hate, I don't want to be the person that's trying to use those phrases. But I think I've used rubbish more in the colloquial sense, more than the literal, not actual trash Refuse. if something that you know that that's that's rubbish since i'm bringing vimto though for the next show i'm just gonna fill the whole thing with uh with british slang and we'll awesome. be chuffed to bits about it that'll be fantastic that's gonna be when when is that gonna happen keith when's the next episode of best in show gonna happen are we gonna try and it's do gonna this be... weekly are we gonna try and do this bi-weekly it's gonna be two weeks from tonight the next episode of best in show radio two weeks. so what's today's date today is the 6th so that would be the 13th so the 20th of february 220 220 maybe we've got to start working out how we'll do something uh in the off weeks maybe we, we got to start building up a bank of some recorded stuff for those weeks off to think about and we'll uh, and we'll do that as we move forward we want to thank everybody for being here and being part of the the what i'm going to call the return of best in show because last week was kind of a disaster fun but a disaster we're back to the basics now yeah microphones and headphones i love this i loved i loved i don't know what we were thinking the rest of that time. Oh, I know what we were thinking. It was fun. But this is where it's at. <laughs> oh, yeah. Next week on The British Show, in two weeks, we'll talk about how blind I am. Oh, I didn't know that there was a, a, a post I was supposed to hit. Yeah, you know, I think you stopped hitting that in episode three. <laughs> two. <laughs> no, you went to three. We'll talk about Love how... Love it or leave it. We'll talk about my blindness next time. That sounds beautiful. I wish Thanks. you could see it. Thanks to all of our friends that have taken part in this week's program. Our friend Rob Giggs, Bobby G, calling in. Even though he was a robot, it was terrific to hear from him. My friend Steve Lopa. I saw Erka Durka in the chat room. My friend The Furb. Sorry, D.I.S. God. And, uh, and there's some other people in here, but they were listed as guests. I don't know. Just be a part of this stupid thing. Yeah, jerks. Cocky socks. Steamroller. Roll over your face. We'll see you guys on the radio. And on the YouTube? Maybe. 88. Peace. Beer. Profane, sorry. Entertaining Talk Radio. Broadcast on the internet. This is HearUsTalk.com. The thing you do with your ears and the place to be.